It couldn't be a more glorious day to celebrate the 4th of July here in Ohio. And we hope you are doing what we all couldn't last year, and that is being together with family and friends to celebrate. Our contribution today to your fourth party, a huge block of racing. First up, it's IndyCar here in the Buckeye State, followed by NASCAR in Wisconsin. What a great way to spend time on America's birthday. It is almost time to go racing. Here at Mid-Ohio as NBC Sports welcomes you to the Honda Indy 200 at Mid-Ohio presented by the HPD Ridgeline. It's round 10 of the 2021 NTT IndyCar Series. And a full field here, 26 cars. Great to see so many numbers and so many fans. Hi folks, happy fourth. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Kelly Stavis, Kevin Lee, ready to bring you some entertainment on the 4th of July. On a beautiful day here in Ohio, let's take a look at the starting grid because it's an all-American front row. Joseph Newgarden with his third pole position in a row. And Colton Herta, the young 21-year-old from California, multi-time IndyCar winner now, and I just have to think that he's going to have something to say and try to spoil Newgarden's day once again because Newgarden has had victory snatched from his hands the two previous race weekends. Going further down the grid, though, you look down to some of the other big names that didn't have ideal qualifying. How about young Renus VK and multi-time IndyCar champion Sebastian Bourdais? They'll start next to each other in row six. And way back on row 10, the man who was fighting for this championship, the youngster, Pato O'Ward, He's just 28 points out of the championship lead. The championship led by Alex Pelot. And O'Ward has to start on that 10th row. He's got some work to do. Later today, NASCAR will be up in Road America. That'll be cool to see on NBC. But Jimmy Johnson, former NASCAR driver, starting at the back, row 13, along with rookie Ryan Norman making his IndyCar debut. Before we go green, let's head to the pits. Here's Kevin Lee. Well, Lee for Nashville, Tennessee's Joseph Newgarden, the path to a third championship should be a lot easier than it's going to be. 88 points, fourth in the championship. As Townsend mentioned, he has been in charge the last couple of weekends. A mechanical at Road America snatched away a win, but they've had pace all season long. Second three times. Team Penske is yet to win. Today might be the day, and he won the poll yesterday on the 50th anniversary of Team Penske's first win. Mark Donahue at Pocono. Watch out for New Garden today to Kelly Stavis. Pat Award already has two race wins this season, and once again, the rising star out of Mexico has a really fast race car. He told me he should have put the car on pole. Instead, he qualified 20th, so he told me he has got to take advantage of equal tire wear early in this race. It should be a lot of fun to watch. He always is, but the 22-year-old should be making moves early and often to start this race at Mid-Ohio, Lee. It's been a real theme in the NTT IndyCar Series this year, and that is the blend of youth and experience and the youngsters have not been afraid to mix it up with the veterans and show just how good they are. Case in point, second-year IndyCar driver, 24-year-old from Spain, is Alex Pelot. He is a two-time winner on the series this year and proudly leads this championship. Oh, and he's done it with tremendous maturity, a lot of finesse. He's a big-picture thinker, drives with a lot of precision. Some of the other young guns drive with a lot more aggression, like Pato Ward, like Renus VK, even Colton Hurd of very aggressive drivers. But this guy is like a surgeon out there, and it served him well, thus the lead in the championship. If you've never seen Mid-Ohio before, this is the finish line right here where the cars are coming across now. Typically in racing, you start and finish in the same point. Not here at Mid-Ohio. Mid-Ohio, you're going to climb all the way to the top of the hill at turn two, then make your way downhill. And just under the umbrella of safety, there's more room, more room to breathe and accelerate and spread out. They start down on the back straight. 
So you can see the field starting to grid up. It's an 80 lap race. That equates to just over 180 miles. It's gonna be a fast, hot afternoon here in Ohio, but a great way to celebrate the 4th of July. It's an all-American front row. The pulsator on your left in the white and yellow car is Joseph Newgarden, and they see green. Here we go in mid-Ohio. Green, green. Monster jump from Newgarden there as Scott Dixon in the orange and blue car looks inside his teammate Marcus Erickson. Dixon wanting to make up positions early. He backs out and there's Will Power in the black car side by side Whoa. further back. Lots of cars off. That's Captain America Ryan Hunter Ray in the red and yellow DHL Honda and it looks like uh, Felix Rosenquist in the Arrow McLaren SP. Two cars stranded on the opening lap. So racing continues if those cars can get underway. Otherwise, there'll be a yellow. In fact, that's what you see now. Upper left-hand corner of the screen, yellow flag is out as Rosenquist is stalled and backwards waiting for the AMR safety team to refire. And you can see the hustle from the AMR crew because they know that if they can refire Felix Rosenquist, he will there? stay on the lead lap. I cannot see. This is the 29 I think on the rear, yes. Swedish driver who has only just returned to the series after missing the last two races. He was involved in the most scariest crash on the Detroit doubleheader weekend several weeks ago. Uh, he spent some time away from the track recovering and makes his return only to be spun out on the opening lap. No visible damage to Ryan Hunter Ray's DHL Honda for Andretti Autosport. So that's a good sign for Ryan. Looking at the left rear of Ryan Hunter Ray, see any damage there I thought that might be flat let's figure out what happened there's James Hinchcliffe in the green and white capstone car he fires it up the inside here uh -oh. and just up oh, Hunter Ray checks up and then Hinchcliffe gets back into the into the back of his teammate Ryan Hunter Ray and then Rosenquist with really with nowhere to go I think uh, I think Roman Grosjean was involved in that as well if you watch look for the purple car a little further back there he gets into Rosenquist right there. So it was Hinchcliffe who turned Ryan Hunter Ray and Grosjean that turned Felix Rosenquist. Let's go for a ride. The Auto Nation on board of Ryan Hunter Ray. Never good when it's teammate on teammate. It isn't, but I, I do believe Ryan checked up because Ryan Hunter Ray, I believe, got into the back of Graham Rahal on board with Rosenquist now. Is another point of view. Simon Pagano in the Menard Chevy. Nice miss. And so you can see Felix Rosenquist has made his way down to pit road. He might have been the biggest victim in all of that. We saw James Hinchcliffe involved, but didn't sound like he felt any damage to his race car as they examine this and really paying attention to that right rear. So a bit of work and a big disappointment for Felix Rosenquist, who's missed the last two rounds after a wicked crash at Detroit, had him sidelined for the next two races. So certainly this is a disappointing way to come back. Yeah, and he was a little frustrated too during qualifying. He thought he'd done a really good lap as Jimmy Johnson, the seven-time Cup Series champ, pits. So too does Ryan hunter Ray. And the nightmare season continues. Someone in a contract year, 15th in the championship. He wants to know what happened. Right rear damage. They're taking a look at it. But he said, I'm definitely having difficulty steering. And they shut it off. They're going to have to do big repairs. Another chance gone for Hunter Ray. And look at his body language in the cockpit. He can't believe it. He got hit by this man here, his teammate. It was nothing malicious. It was just circumstantial. And James Hinchcliffe returns to the track in the capstone Honda. Just unfortunate. First lap incident. Everybody tied, everybody going for position. And Hinchcliffe racing to catch the pack before we go back to green. Meanwhile, Pato Award and Santino Ferrucci grabbed six positions. As you can see, damage to the nose of Grosjean's car. Let's take a look at Award start. Going to the outside. Right side. Three, three wide. This guy's known Three as the wide. ninja Four because wide. of his quick hands. Look at him. Still right. Still right. Got a gap there. Slight nudge with Ed Jones there <laughs> and then keeps going. Pretty good hit. That's nose to gearbox. And 
All that's clear, the, all clear. If you're going to hit, that's the best way to do it, nose to tail without any suspension contact. The bullfighter getting it done. Ready to go back to, to green as the Honda pace car leaves the circuit. Joseph Newgarden leads the field to green. Let's hope we can complete a full lap here. Under green, spread out a little bit more. Here we go. Let's build into a race rhythm. Dixon on the charge, looking outside of Will Power, up in the keyhole. Dixon backs off. He'll look to try to square up the exit. Runs low. Wow, what a difference that is. We saw that in practice and qualifying. Drivers going to the high line where it's a little smoother, but it seems like early on dip, the grip is down low, but Will Power going to come right back on Re Dixon. Ready to return the favor. And Dixon lets him go. Now fights back. Top of the hill, turn five. Mr. Mid-Ohio is oh. now offense. That's blind corner. Nobody can see coming over the hill. And there's contact. Ed Jones heavy into Will Power. There is no way to see over that corner without smoke. And then you add all the tire smoke from Will Power Fire laying into the throttle. Right and Ed Jones, I'm sure, just had to guess. And unfortunately, guess wrong. Heavy contact to the Sealmaster Honda on the left front. Not a replay. We'll see what happened here. It didn't appear as though there was any contact between Dixon and Power, but we'll have a second look. And the Verizon team at Team Penske get ready for replacement parts to a heavily damaged front end on Power's car. Here it is again. Really good racing between two of the veterans, two of the champions in the sport. Power gets Dixon for that fourth spot. Dixon responds. Oh, there was contact. A little bit of touch there. Dixon with a little bit of squeeze on Power to the apex, and then poor Ed Jones just, he didn't know where to go. What an eventful start to this Honda Indy 200 here at Mid-Ohio. Lap one, multi-car crash, James Hinchcliffe, Ryan Hutteray, Roman Grosjean, and Felix Rosenquist, and as Will Power is getting out, is it day done for the champion and Indy 500 winner? You're watching NBC's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar series. Fifth Third Bank, official partner of Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan. This is banking a fifth third better. And by NTT, official sponsor and technology partner of the NTT IndyCar series. Welcome to our live coverage here on NBC and happy 4th of July on a beautiful day, but it has been a stop-start affair here in the Honda Indy 200. Have not yet strung a full green flag lap together yet because of two incidents on the two starts. And this is the most recent, Scott Dixon, Will Power, and Will Power sitting there in a huge plume of smoke. Other drivers unsighted, Ed Jones in the Dale Coin racing with Vassar Sullivan, Sealmaster Honda just gets crunched into power. The reason power does this, he gets sideways, spins out. At this point, he wants to stay in the throttle because he desperately wants to spin the car back around with this wheel spin and keep going without stalling the car. Unfortunately, it creates a huge smoke screen. He's got this camera in the fans. Look at the crowd jump to their feet. That's what it's like on the hillside there in turn five, a neat angle, but the Sealmaster Honda dead on the scene there for the day. So, uh, kind of a hot spot of the track. One happened in turn four, one happened in turn five, and the field will regroup. And this, these fans here on the hill, the most popular spot to watch uh, IndyCar racing. Getting a front row view of that. Pretty wild. So, one of the things we saw there, Diff, was that with Power and Dixon, the two different tire compounds, because Power was on the black tires, it takes a few laps really here at Mid Ohio to get those up to temperature, but 
We've been snooping in on the number 51, Dale Point with Rick Ware Racing, Roman Grosjean, 35 years old, longtime Formula One racer, had a pole position his rookie year here in IndyCar, and Olivier Boisson is his race engineer on the stand. Let's learn a little bit more about what's going on there. And the 314 on black tires, most of people ahead of that is going to be on the red. Yeah, after those two, I think we're going to get into the result of the red guys, so then I think uh, we know what to do. What they're talking about there, folks, is a big game of cat and mouse and strategy. There are two different tyre compounds in IndyCar competition. The harder compound and the primary tyre uh, that Firestone brings. And then there's a softer compound. It's a quicker tyre, but it doesn't last as long. It's a softer compound red wall tyre. So Grosjean was talking with Olivier Boisson, his engineer there, as to who around him is on what tyre. And you have to run each compound at least once in a race for a couple of laps of green competition, green uh, racing competition. So it's important to know from the driver's seat who's on what ahead. What am I battling? Who am I racing? And what tools do they have? And that's because the black tyre, like I said, takes some laps to come in. So on restarts, the advantage is to be on reds, just like we see there from the number 15, the fifth third bank car of Graham Rahal. Hometown kid, he knows this place, Mid-Ohio, better than any backyard he's ever lived in. Spent a lot of his life here as we get the Honda track preview. Graham going down the longest straightaway down here to this break zone in turn four, probably the best opportunity to pass here at Mid-Ohio, especially if you're on the push to pass button, which gives you about 50 extra horsepower. You can use that for up to 200 seconds during the race. And you've got the ability to switch it on and off and just burn one second at a time. Now Graham will come to probably the most challenging part of the racetrack, I think, up over this blind crest. There are four, in fact, blind corners at Mid-Ohio, including this one, turn nine, where there's a big step off on the exit as you're trying to lay down 750 horsepower. The back end can jump away from you. We saw a lot of drivers struggle with that during practice. Graham's dad, Bobby, won here twice in 1985 and 1986. Graham had a family high moment back in 2015 when he was victorious. He'd love to repeat that today with family and friends here. But it's time to go back to racing here at Mid-Ohio. Colton Hurd, a hot in pursuit of race leader Joseph Newgarden. And then Marcus Erickson for Chip Ganassi Racing, followed by his six-time championship winning teammate Scott Dixon. He's also won here six times at Mid-Ohio. He'd love to make it seven today. Watch Rita's VK there in the red white Sonax car. Young Gun trying to make it happen on another Young Gun. The championship leader Alex Pillow. This is Graham Ray Hall. That's Rita's VK just ahead. And we'll see if anybody pops out. It looks like Alex Pillow is making moves further up on Rossi. Indeed the two go side by side but Rossi takes the position. And that's Romain Grosjean around the outside of Scott McLaughlin. Great move. He loves this track. He's never raced here before, but he said, that's one of my strengths. All throughout my career, I've been able to adapt to new circuits really quickly. Look at Alexander Rossi struggle a bit on those black tires on this restart. Alex Pelot knows this is a great chance to overtake, but every corner Rossi completes, the temperature builds in the harder black tire, and that advantage for Pelot will largely fade away. So you have to make it happen early if you're on an alternate tire strategy to the car in front. There you see left-hand side, who's on what right now? Rossi and Bourdais on black. By the way, that move that we saw from Romain Grosjean on Scott McLaughlin, that makes Grosjean the biggest mover in the race. He's up eight positions from where he started. He might get one more here. Bourdais again on that harder black tire. Bourdais blocks to the inside. Roman Grosjean will not oh! appreciate that. And he goes Tokyo Drift around the outside, loses a spot to McLaughlin, and he's going to lose a couple more here. This is Simon Pagano lining up on Grosjean. Grosjean gives him the squeeze, and here comes Pato Award splitting the difference. Can he go to the inside? He can't quite make it. Oh, I really thought Pato Award was going to fire it up the inside there. We already sent it. Boy, Pagano being very patient on the throttle there. A lot of coasting in the corner. Watch this. Grosjean 
looked inside, and then Kevin went straight to the outside and absolutely ran out of grip that far up in the keyhole. And remember, he has some front wing damage. Olivier Bosson, his engineer, said it's going to change your COP. You're going to have to deal with it a little bit. How does that impact the driving? Not there so much. That was just really kind of going for it. Got blocked to the inside, went to the outside, unfortunately too high, and he's up where the dirt, and even this early, some marbles start to accumulate offline there in the keyhole. Hey, you're not going to give Grosjean any props for car control? That was pretty sweet. It was pretty <laughs> impressive. He's a fast learner, no doubt. Looks like everybody opting to run the low line now through the keyhole as the track is rubbered up through the weekend. There's a concrete patch there through the middle of the corner and in practice the drivers were really experimenting with different different lines trying to figure it out. Joseph Newgarden with a one second lead over Colton Herter and then Marcus Ericsson. This is a pretty spirited fight here. The 20 year old Dutch driver in the red, black and white car, the Sonax Chevy. That is Renus VK and he is driving with a plate and eight screws in his left shoulder and collarbone area broke a collarbone several weeks ago a cycling accident with his trainer and he was unable to race at the previous event two weeks ago at road america which is where we're going to send you live after this for countdown to green for the nascar cup series race kelly as you well know first time cup has been to road america since 1956 it's going to be an awesome afternoon will be highly anticipated a lot of fun to see those cup drivers making their way at that famous road course for the first time today back to Renus VK that broken collarbone it's incredible what he's been able to do this weekend with that plate and those screws in there the team have had to make a couple of adjustments just to get him a little bit more comfortable in the car they've added some padding between his haunts device and his shoulder they added to that they've also had to bandage over the incision from the surgery that had irritated him in her early practices team told me now he is 100 percent good to go by the way that there thanks kel that there was not a really easy pass uh, for, for position Bourdais, Sebastian Bourdais in the black rocket Chevy actually had to give that position back to Romain Grosjean. Race control said, yep, you were guilty of blocking. You need to uh, give that back to the Swiss-born Frenchman. And let me explain blocking an IndyCar. If you react to another driver making a move, that's blocking. If you're proactive, as you watch Bourdais, see that? That is a good call from IndyCar. That's to the letter of the rules. Grosjean went to the inside. Bourdais reacted with a block. Then Grosjean went to the outside, and fortunately, Grosjean didn't make it to the outside wall with that move. So Bourdais had to give up the position, and uh, once again, IndyCar calling it exactly like they describe it in the pre-race driver beeping. His award goes to the inside of Scotty Mack, well, that number three PPG car. McLaughlin tried to fight it, but he couldn't with Award being on that inside line so he moves up another one so that means there, Grosjean up, position to you. and O'Ward have made up nine positions each from their starting spots really good early progress the 22 year old Mexican on your screen here as he eases by Bordet that was the second position I believe that Bordet was asked by race control to give up he had to yield two positions so that aids Pato Award from Aaron McLaren SP. The young Mexican has made up 10 positions. He's second in the championship. He knows how important those points are. As we told you earlier, you can expect plenty of fireworks with NASCAR on NBC. The Cup Series returns to both Road America for the first time since the mid 1950s. Our coverage picks up when we say farewell here a little later from mid-Ohio with Countdown to Green and in the Cup Series race. Alex Bowman of Henrik Motorsports on the pole position. And with thanks to our friends at GEICO, we have these beautiful uh, aerial images of the mid-Ohio sports car course, the undulation, the complexity of this place. It's one of the toughest, but it's also one of the most fun if you're a driver, and especially if you're Joseph Newgarden, who has led all 16 laps thus far and has a nice margin of about 1.3 seconds over Colton Herter. It's one Chevy, one Honda in the top two positions. Really cool to see those aerial shots at mid-Ohio as Joseph Newgarden just kind of managing the lead right there over Colton Herter, 1.4 seconds back. Let's check in on a little radio with the Gamebridge team. Throttle application. 
Second gear is super bossy, like out of the ramp limit out of the hole. Okay, copy. Exactly sure what Colton's referring to. Throttle application, I think, in second gear. I think he said it's a little jumpy. I'm not sure. That might be with the engine setting. So many things that you can adjust on an Indy car. As you can see, Herta firing around mid Ohio. With the engineers, you're trying to control the balance. And then you also have to manage things like engine performance and fuel savings. Well, guess what this 21-year-old Californian does in his spare time? We've told you, but we haven't often showed you. He's the drummer in a band called The Zibs, and they're building their live show portfolio. This was a recent gig in Santa Clarita in California. Can't quite see a lot of Colton, but he's over in the back there on the drum kit and setting the tone and the beat for The Zibs with a bunch of fans enjoying what they do here is the Maya Shank Honda of Jack Harvey this is the Indy 500 winning team Kev Jack Harvey is one of those that was going to do something different Michael Shank said all options are open they're coming in they're going to need fuel save to be able to do it in two more stops or I'm sorry in one more massive it's likely a three-stop strategy at this point. So the Indy 500 winner, Elio Castro Neves, will be back with this team for multiple races towards the end of the season. Actually, he's back at the next race on the streets of Nashville, Tennessee for the Music City Grand Prix. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome event. So much promotion, musical activity, concerts, celebrities will be in town going to be terrific through the streets of Nashville. That is an early pit stop for Jack Harvey to make it on one more stop. Going to take probably a little yellow help and some fuel savings. A lot of teams told me the big gamble was maybe pitting on lap 20 or 21. So lap 18, a bold move. But obviously the team has uh, made bold moves all season and it worked out huge for them. Hey, the greatest the spectacle of racing with Castro Neves. The fifth third bank onboard camera up and over the hill. This is where Power and Dixon collided. And by the way, that incident was never reviewed uh, by race control. So obviously they deemed immediately it was a racing incident. Here is third place Marcus Erickson. But race control reminding us we review everything. So they're watching all the time. So gotcha. nothing nothing slides under the nose of race control. Like you said, they just deem that to be good old fashioned elbows out racing. How about the job of Marcus Erickson this week in a career best qualifying effort started third. That comes on the heels of his first career win just a few weeks ago. And Marcus told me starting up front like this changes everything. It makes life so much easier. He feels like he spent his IndyCar career starting 15th to 18th. And he said, when you do that, you have to be so calculated and clever with everything you do, every pass you make on track, the strategy calls, the pit stop work. And he has been very good at passing on track. He has more on track passes than anyone else uh, in this series so far this year, looking to capitalize on such a good start to the weekend here today. And he's strategist there, Kelly, Mike O'Gara. There's not a whole lot that Mike hasn't seen in motorsport. Enormously successful and experienced. His engineer, Brad Goldberg, always does a good job. And it's taken a little while longer than what Ericsson would have liked. But now, finally, the success is coming. Here's the PNC Bank Honda of Mr. Mid-Ohio. Now, the incident between this guy and Will Power, I'm pretty sure, has left the Team Penske man a little hot under the collar, Kevin Lee. And Will Power spent a little time in the medical center. Your right wrist is wrapped up. Are you okay? Yeah, I think, yeah, it's not, not broken, fortunately. Uh, I foolishly left my hands on the wheel, uh, you know, when there was all that smoke. Um, so, uh, yeah, good lesson there. Um, yeah, super disappointed to be out that early, you know. I, uh, I know why uh, Scott squeezed me down so much, man. I, I had no nowhere to go, and I actually slowed up a lot to make sure that I wouldn't hit him. But he he squeezed me that tight; it was impossible. Like I was on the curve, and sucks. I should have known he'd be aggressive because he's on reds, I was on black, so he really wanted to get by. I know the team is trying to repair the car. Can you drive it today? 
Yeah, I, I, I can go out and try. Um, it's very sore, but uh, I will. If, if we got no um, chance to get points, it's probably not worth doing it, aggravating this a bit more. But um, uh, yeah, just a ah man. So I mean, that's that's what you get when you choose blacks, right? Like people are going to attack you pretty hard. Um, if I could have maintained position, you know, I think we would have had a pretty good race. But yeah, unfortunate. Thank you, Will. So Power there just talking about the difference between the tyre compounds and he kind of might feels though maybe he should have gone a different way but it was an awkward incident that has left the 12 maybe out of the race. He might come back if they can get the car fixed. Meanwhile his teammate Joseph Newgarden has led every single lap of the way. The Peacock Original Lost Speedways is back with an all-new second season. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Matthew Dillner pick back up where they left off, uncovering rich histories behind America's forgotten racetracks. Now, important to note that every episode of Lost Speedways Season 1 and the all-new Season 2 is streaming now exclusively on Peacock, and you can start streaming today. Welcome back to Mid-Ohio, folks. Lee Diffie, Townsend Bell, Kevin Lee, and Kelly Stavist. We say happy 4th of July and happy 4th to the seven-time Cup Series champ, Jimmy Johnson, just giving some breathing room, or did he, to Scott McLaughlin there? Was the it on the Honda? He had to check up big time as McLaughlin stuffed it in there, kind of surprised the 48 car. Then he's off wide on the dirt, and then it really takes a few corners here to clean things up. Here comes Jack Harvey looking to make another move. Jimmy's got a really cool... Uh, design on the car on the Carvana Honda this week and it's a collaboration between American Legion and Carvana they kind of like to call it car vets and if you look on the side of the 48 where all the blue is for Carvana you also see a, a patchwork and what they are it's 142 patches submitted by veterans and it is a wonderful dedication it it's, means a lot to all who have served in the military. Now, for Jimmy himself, his grandfather served, as well as his late brother-in-law. So it's a really special uh, design, a really special moment. Right, right, right. Special all for clear. Jimmy's first Good trip to Ohio. Nothing out your back. Yeah, that's really cool to recognize all those veterans on this car. You can see some of those patches 
just from the in-car camera as Harvey gets by Jimmy Johnson. Still on the lead lap. About 52 seconds back, Joseph Newgarden. Oh, about three corners behind right now. Leader of the race coming up. As there you see even more of those patches. Adorning the top of the side pots and the wheel flip on the back. There's Newgarden. There's Colton Herta. That gap stays pretty consistent in about two and a half seconds. And it's a pretty amazing day overall for Team Penske. It's an amazing day. It's an amazing weekend because yesterday, July the 3rd, marked the 50th anniversary of Team Penske's first ever IndyCar win. And earlier this weekend, we caught up for some reflections on that with the president of Team Penske, Tim Sindrick. Yeah, 1971, when you look at Mark Donahue, you know, being the first guy to, you know, win the 500 there, and then, you know, you come here 50 years later and you, you look back to that day. In history, it doesn't look, seem that long ago. You know, he's, he's looking at almost 800 race starts. It's the legacy, really, that it reminds you what you represent. To know that, okay, we've been part of you know, 219 wins. You know, for Roger to look at winning one out of every three races, it's pretty cool to be part of that. And you know what else is cool? Is that the late Mark Donahue's son, one of his children, David, an accomplished racer in his own right, shared these pictures with me overnight. The winning ring from his dad in the Schaefer 500, and then this beautiful platter signed by every driver who was in the race. And I think he might even think about giving that ring to Roger one day. David also shared these words. It's actually that race, that Schaefer 500, 50 years ago. He said, it's the only race I actually remember attending when my dad was racing. We weren't supposed to go. Racing was very dangerous in those days. And mum did not want to come home without dad. So we didn't go to too many IndyCar races. I do remember this, however. My mum found my dad's car parked on the smaller infield oval and wrote a note to him on a KFC box, letting him know that we, the family, were there. Dad then won the race and we all ended up in victory lane. And he said, Lee, I think it'd be really cool if the captain won today for himself and for my dad. That would be incredible. 50 years, that is a long time and so much history for Team Penske in that time frame. And Joseph Newgarden absolutely delivering once again. And I say that because at Detroit and at Road America, the last two races, Newgarden was in control only to fall to the clutches of bad luck in the closing stages of this race. Kev, what's going on with the 51? So he just pitted for his second set of uh, alternates, the softer red tires, which he told me is by far the preferred choice. It will last long enough to be the tire of choice. So he was a big mover in the first stint. Watch for him to pick up spots later. And another testament to how much the Formula One veteran loves America. There's a big break coming up. He could go back home. No, the family is coming here after the weekend. They're going to spend the next six weeks touring America again in an RV, eventually ending up in Nashville through the GP Brickyard weekend. They're going to go through Cincinnati, Chicago, all the Midwest. Romain Grosjean is not only loving America, he's also loving running at the front again. Yeah, the family arrived tomorrow, and he is so excited. It has been a chapter of his life that he never expected to unfold. He thought he'd still be racing Formula One all around the world at this stage. The horrific fire and crash that he suffered late last year in Bahrain where his life was on the line. And his life took a change, a very different change, but he is loving it. And he has such a different outlook on life. And he is just such positive energy to be around. You don't often talk to Roman Grosjean without seeing a big smile on his face. Oh, he is loving IndyCar. He's really an aggressive personality in terms of taking on the challenge and the physical challenge of racing in IndyCar. See him many times through the weekend in the paddock, and he's just got a stance that's aggressive and wants to push as he pushes his way past the number 52, Ryan Norman. Ryan Norman. And he's going to make these fresh Firestones work. Dixon, Rossi, pit lane. Scott Dixon to pit road. He said his race car was pretty average. He'll take off the red alternates and go with black primaries for this stint. Alexander Rossi gets his service at Andretti Autosport. He's going to those alternate 
Greggs as well. Here we go. And the times you see on the bottom left of that graphic there, 6.7 for Dixon, 7.4 for Rossi, a little quicker for O'Ward. Yeah, one of the things I noticed too is that Alexander Rossi somehow during this race has lost the air vent on the top of the aero screen. So we're looking out the back there, but there you see the top of that Napa Honda. That air vent is mandated by IndyCar to keep the drivers cool. And you might think, well, why would they need a mandate? Why wouldn't you want an air vent on a hot day like it is today in Ohio? That's because it adds drag on the straightaway. So there's a chance Rossi could pick up some straight line as Joseph Newgarden brings the Expel Chevy to pit lane for his first stop. Kevin Lee, you're there. And by the way, we also just saw Alexander Rossi and Pato Award come on and come in, and they took sticker red, so they may be faster in this stint. For those like Newgarden, they started on the sticker reds. They need to run a set of the primaries, and they only have one set of the reds. So Newgarden is back out and a little bit of fuel to burn because they went longer than they had to. Alex Pillow is also in, pitting from fourth position. He goes from reds to primary, so this set will last a little bit longer. Watching these blend outs, Pillow coming out, there goes his teammate Scott Dixon. Already up to speed, has tires up to temperature. This could get close with Alexander Rossi now. Rossi has a lap of temperature on his tire. Pillow on the harder black tire, which is difficult to build temperature on the outlap. I'll bet Rossi's gonna have a shot right here. Both drivers likely on push to pass down this long back straightaway. Get ready for it. It's usually an inside move down into turn four. Is Alexander Rossi close enough? He's not. Good work, Alex Pillow. Good stuff with the two box there. You watch the, ladle, the battle below as Colton Herta comes for his pit stop. Here goes Rossi to the inside. Rossi should be able to pull away and open a gap. So Colton Herta went a lap longer than Newgard. Let's see how the Gainbridge crew can get the Firestones on as fast as possible. Fuel is out. No, long stop. What's going on? There's a problem. There is a problem. Hold on. 14 seconds. Hold on. I don't think he was flowing. Hold on. Hold Disaster. on. Disaster. That is an hey, eternity on pit lane. 25 seconds. And look at how far it drops. Colton okay, you're going to have a uh, car coming out 15 and coming out of turn one. From second in the race, he is now fighting to stay in the top 10. And he's going to have a difficult time fighting Graham Rahal as Colton Hurt is now on those cold black tires. It looked like they almost touched there at the exit of the keyhole. Still there. Should be no problem here for Graham on hot tires, and it isn't. Pato Award and Romain Grosjean are not that far behind Colton Herter. So the challenges are coming thick and fast, and that was a huge assistance to this man, Joseph Newgarden. Heard his problem in the pits. Townsend, sit down. He just did the splits <laughs> to James Brown. I think I pulled a hammy. <laughs> Great spot to watch here at Mid-Ohio. Welcome back, folks. We're live on the 4th of July from Mid-Ohio IndyCar Racing before the summer break. Yes, multiple weeks off for the drivers and teams. A well-earned summer break to spend time with family and friends before the Music City Grand Prix on the streets of Nashville on August 8th. We're riding aboard the Auto Nation machine, the Napa Auto Parts Honda of Alexander Rossi in fourth in pursuit of Scott Dixon. Rossi's turn to run on the red tires now while his competitors have to do their black run here in the middle stint. So this is Rossi's chance to make up ground. Meanwhile, this driver, Colton Herta, has a ton of ground to make up after trouble with fuel on pit lane. Kevin, any idea what happened with the fuel rig down there? Faulty fuel probe. They stared at it. They looked at it. They assessed it. I just checked in with Brian Herta and they said, yep, we're going to go ahead. Yes, they are going to change that uh, fuel hose and the probe and the entire assembly but not a human error, a mechanical error, and one of the contenders, not out of it, but certainly has a steep hill to climb. See, they've got a 
trial Buckeye there in the pit boxes to try to flow fuel and confirm that everything's fixed. So frustrating for Colton Herta. They were hoping with the overcut to make up some ground on Newgard. Instead, they lost probably about 18, 17, 18 seconds with that long stop, 25 seconds in total in the pit box as Dixon and Rossi continue to battle it out. Dixon's up to speed on those blacks. The Reds seem like they're a little bit quicker at the start of the stint, so Rossi trying to close, but it looks like it's tough from where I'm sitting. How bizarre does this sound? With 45 laps to go, still the larger portion of this 80-lap race, if Alexander Rossi were to finish here, his best result of the season in four. Wait, what? Yeah, that's that just, possible. just doesn't sound right, does it? It's been a frustrating Please, season please. for Alexander. The 2018 winner here at Mid-Ohio, he put on a clinic here three years ago. So hopefully this is a turn, this is a pivot point in the season. His three teammates have suffered some adversity. Collision on the opening lap between James Hinchcliffe and Ryan hunter -Ray, two of his teammates, and then you just saw on that most recent pit stop and the follow-up from Kevin Lee, the fuel pro problem for Colton Herter. So Rossi is the highest place Andretti Autosport Honda. Now, later this year, he, for the third time, is going to race in the Baja 1000 in, uh, in the Honda, the HPD Ridgeline. He got to take it for a rip. This is a new Ridgeline, by the way, not the one that he's raced in the previous two in 2018 and 2019. This looks good. <laughs> How about that? Out on the motocross track, which just sits outside the entrance here to mid-Ohio. Sign me up for some of that fun in the mud, sliding around and sending it in the ridgeline. So Rossi really loves it. I mean, to go once, maybe that's a bit of a, a PR move. It's a bit of a, you know, a promotion. But to go for your third time, you only do that unless you love it. To knock out 1,000 miles down there in Mexico, that is a punishing experience. And, Good to know he's having fun trying. He still keeps getting a little bit closer here to Scott Dixon as the push to pass seconds starting to burn off. Dixon with just 100 seconds remaining of the 200 available. Rossi we'll add just a half turn for the final stop. By the way, you always like to say it's possible, but you've got to be brave. Remember Rossi's first Baja? There was a member of the public driving on the track the wrong way. He jumped over the top of that car. It was almost a head-on collision. Then two years ago, there was a navigation error in his co-driver barrel rolled off the edge of a cliff. They were able to get the car, the truck going again, the trophy truck going and get it back. This guy is brave. I like, the, brave. I like the way you say that. I mean, if Ivan Stewart was listening, he'd be like, heck, that happens every 100 yeah. miles in Mexico. <laughs> well, it just doesn't happen in IndyCar racing. <laughs> That's all. So 36 laps to the good. That's how many Joseph Newgarden, the 30-year-old American, has led on Independence Day on his team owner's 50th anniversary of his first win. It's all going to script. The Olympics begin later this month, July 23rd, live from Tokyo, right here. On your home for the Olympics, NBC. Not a thing, Mo, and world records falling at the track and field. Trials there out in Eugene, such a great job. You did a lot of fun hearing your voice calling the speed of the U.S. team. You looking forward to that? Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Team USA in so many sports are in such good shape. Uh, really looking forward to it. There's going to be a lot to go uh, get excited about. And certainly this driver, the two-time Indianapolis 500 winner in the Shield Cleansers My Jack Honda. Takuma Sato is excited. It's in his home city of Tokyo. Sato solidly running in 15. Team teammate. Local hero, Graham Rahal, up there in six, having a really good day. But back up front, all Joseph Newgard. And let's review how we got here. We're approaching the, uh, the half mile. We are halfway through this, and it was an eventful opening lap. James Hinchcliffe into Ryan Hunter Ray, and then Romain Grosjean into Felix Rosenquist. This is how it looked from Ryan Hunter Ray looking back. There's Hinch. Shame for Andretti Autosport teammates. This is the first time this season that all four Andretti cars qualified in the top 10, but it would only last for one corner. On board with Felix Rosenquist, 
He had to check up. He was hit from behind by Grosjean. Hunter Ray could only bang the steering wheel and shake his head as he had to come to grips with the fact that he would go out on lap one. Able to continue, but a lap down. And then this happened on the restart. Will Power, Scott Dixon, contact at the top of turn five. Power lays into the throttle, throws up the big old smoke screen, and Ed Jones, nowhere to go, nowhere to see, goes nose to nose contact into the Verizon car. And then lap 32, Colton Herta pits from second place and has to just absolutely suffer through an issue with the fuel probe. Took 25 seconds to get that car off of pit lane. He'd go from second all the way down to seventh in that one stop. And but oh this my. guy, 40 of 42 laps and a lot of clean air up front. And the guy who was shadowing him and putting the most pressure on him, Colton Herter, who Townsend just documented with those issues, you know, went from being just a couple, three seconds back, putting pressure on Newgarden to now being almost 20 seconds in arrears of the race leader. So this is Simon Paginot. And speaking of the, that, that uh, race recap that we just showed you, that other replay, you know, the more you watch things, the more you get to learn. Jones was right behind him, and Simon checked up because he saw what happened to his teammate, and Jones pulled out and was unsighted. That's when he clobbered uh, Will Power. It should come as no surprise that Simon Pagano, with moves like that to avoid chaos, is one of just two drivers that has completed 100 laps this season, 100% of the laps this season, along with Scott Dixon. Let's listen to some radio on the Menards car. I'm good everywhere. Except for turn 12, exit, and turn 2, and just full throttle, waiting. It'll probably get better once the concrete takes more rubber. Just talking about the grip available on Power Down, and Kyle Moyer, Moyer there on the stand reminding his driver, hey, Power Down should get a little bit better as it rubbers up through the race, but 44 laps already complete. I'm sure Pagano's thinking, might not happen before I leave here today. Two Team Penske cars in the top five in the championship, and Simon is one of them coming into uh, this race today. Points as they run now, Simon would be outside that top five right now, but still a long way to go. Still 36 laps left to run here at Mid-Ohio. Speaking of championship points, the 22-year-old Mexican here in the view, Zaro McLaren SP Chevy, Pato O'Ward is well and truly in this championship fight. He's an Indy Lights champion of several years ago. And Kevin, he is desperate. He was desperate for his first race win. He's now got two, but he's desperate to be a champion. This is a young man in a hurry. And he is very much thinking championship this year. And just to let people know that may not be familiar, you mentioned Mexican. And wait a minute, this is an Irish name. I thought you said he's from Mexico. Well, several generations ago on his father's side, his family was from Ireland. The last few from Mexico, he actually has spent half his life in Texas, in San Antonio. He also has an advantage on tires. He still has a set of sticker reds to remain. They're faster, they're better today, and he's the only one in the top 10 that will have it. Meanwhile, everyone trying to find an answer for Joseph Newgarden. It looks like the third race in a row he's gonna dominate, but this time, can he bring it home? Stay with us from Mid-Ohio. Thirty-three laps to go here at the Honda Indy 200 at Mid-Ohio, round 10 of the NTT IndyCar Series for 2021. There might be a 6.3 second lead for Joseph Newgarden to second place Marcus Erickson, but things are hotting up here for the final step on the podium at the moment. Scott Dixon, Mr. Six-Time at Mid-Ohio, is under pressure, increasing pressure from Andretti Autosports, Alexander Rossi, then Alex Pelot, the championship leader. Graham Rahal is the next one in this queue as they all start to close in on Dixon. Yeah, and it's taken Scott Dixon a lot of use of the button, the push to pass button, to stay there in the third position. You see on the left-hand side of the screen, Dixon just 74 seconds remaining. That's the fewest of anybody inside the top 10 right now. Meanwhile, Marcus Erickson, Minus point six pretty thrifty, point 168 seconds to go, and Erickson has been able to close that gap on Newgarden a little bit. Just 6.8 seconds back at this point with about 31 laps to go. So we'll have to track push to pass usage as Erickson comes up on Dalton Kellett there, who is just a lap down.
So far, it sure seems like the red tire is the advantage, but a lot of these cars, Kevin, are gonna have to go to use reds if they opt for reds for the final stint. We were talking about it in the break. We just don't know if used reds will hang on in the temperature, 112 degree track temp right now. Kelly. You talk about the lack of push to pass remaining for Scott Dixon down to 74 seconds. I suspect a good chunk of that was used trying to work his way through traffic. We heard him over the radio getting a little bit frustrated with some of those cars telling his spotter to tell their team to get him out of the way. So that may have cost the six time and reigning champion who came into this race 53 points outside the championship. He told me there's actually less pressure chasing down the championship lead than trying to hold it off. Last year he saw a big points gap shrink up. He said that got a little bit stressful. Right now his gap to Rossi behind him shrinking up. Simon Pagano in the Menard Chevy hits pit road again. Taking a bit of a gamble here, Kevin, to go long on this final stop. He'll have to go 30 laps to the finish, save a little bit of fuel. He goes to sticker reds. But I think it was worth the gamble because they were running 14th and not in the mix, and they're not in the championship mix, mix so their chance of what their options are. Come in now, if somehow a caution comes out before the rest of the field pits, he would cycle to the front, and that would also save him the fuel he needs to make it home. Easily. So, Dippy, where does that put the rest of the field right now? in the danger zone danger zone baby team penske covering their bases though that's what you would do if you're dominating up front with new guard you cover your bet pull in pagino early and protect for the win so why is this such a big deal that joseph Newgarden is leading and leading well and looking good to win this race because he's been in this position a couple of times before and that win has eluded him here's a reminder Oh, you got it. Garden. I just got loose in the wake. I thought I had the car and then touched the grass. And I think once I touched the grass, I pitched me sideways. It's certainly not the start Joseph Newgarden wanted to the season. Joseph Newgarden, he's led all 52 laps. Look out, look out. Here comes Pato Award. Oh, look. they touch. Pato Award leads this race. What were those last few laps like? Just pretty sad. Yeah, it's hard not to be disappointed. Here we go from Road America. Joseph Newgarden controls the field. The gearbox is sticking. Going to get downshifted to eight. Yellow. I have two laps of green. Oh. Alex Blow has got to run to the outside. He's going to blow by Joseph Newgarden. What happened to Newgarden? Nothing. Emergency mode. Lift his shift. Can't do anything, dude. Joseph Newgarden comes home 21st. Obviously, disappointing for all of us. I guess it wasn't meant to be again. So let's put some numbers to that. At Detroit 2, he led 67 of the 70 laps, only to see Pato Award go wheel to wheel with him and kind of duel him out, had better tires at the end. Road America, Newgarden led 32 of the 55, but those 32 were in the last portion of the race, the greatest portion of the race, up until the last couple of laps to see it go by. So has been so close. Newgarden is sick of finishing second. He's done that three times this year. So today is huge with 29 to go as we ride with Graham Rahal in the fifth third bank Honda. Green flag pit stops look to be coming up here and it's gonna be a huge battle for in-laps, pit stops and out-laps for this guy, Graham Rahal, and the cars he's racing with for that podium position. Dixon, probably all the way down to Grosjean, maybe award, depending on how things go. That Firestone telemetry just showing you how fast these guys are still going on used tires as the fuel lightens. They're able to carry just a little bit more corner speed and a little bit more straightaway speed. See what kind of top speed we get from Firestone here going to turn one. And right now, Graham's saying the car really not too bad. Balance is pretty good, just a little inconsistent at high speed, not bad overall. He feels like their championship hopes are out the window, so he plans to be a little more aggressive going for race wins. Graham's mom is here, one of his sisters is here, his wife, his daughter, as Renus VK is in for the final time. 28 laps to go. The Ed Carpenter Racing Man and the Sonax Chevy is released and is good to go home from here. Couple more cars that put that lead group in the danger zone a little bit deeper. I gotta think that Newgarden has to cover at this point. 
come in, 27 laps to go. You're in max fuel range to run Rich all the way to the end. And speak of the devil, right to the box. The question is, what tires does the Expel Chevy take on for the final stint? Kevin. So Joseph Newgarden should be inside the window, safely to get it home with 27 to go. Shouldn't need any fuel save. Tire choice for him, it's the primary Firestones. Speedway fuel, Alexander Rossi is also going to come in at this point as well. Joseph Newgarden trying to give Team Penske their first win of the season. It'll be on the 50th anniversary weekend of Team Penske's first win ever in IndyCar. Here's Alexander Rossi making his final stop. That was the third tire stint. Now he's back to the primary Firestone. He's away. Also, a race off pit road. He's going to sneak just in front of Graham Ray Hall. Look at the pit stop times, though. Ray Hall at 5.7. Good run. Ray Hall boys giving Graham a chance to go after the podium. Meanwhile, Scott Dixon stays out. On board with Dixon, looking out the back to his teammate, Alex Pillow. Great work, Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan Racing with a super slick service of Graham Ray Hall. So no immediate oh. pressure. Whoa, Dixon gets a little tail he happy. He is pushing hard. He knows that this pit stop sequence, the overcut for this to work, you are Dixon has to push Erickson to the box. And as soon as the leader, Joseph Newgarden, came in, they told Marcus Erickson to really push for a couple laps. You see the black Firestone tires going on the number eight car. Meanwhile, his teammate, Scott Dixon, also coming down to pit road. He, too, pushing hard on that in lap. And he will also go to uh, another set of the black pair of primary Firestone tires and Speedway Fuel. Kev. Well, Marc Rojan has had a great comeback today. He was very disappointed qualified, but the race car, he said, was good. From 18th, he's been legitimately up into the top 10. No problems for fuel the rest of the way for him. Primary Firestone Speedway fuel. Rojan back out. Where does he blend in? He blends in behind Rossi and Graham Rahal. So, Rahal with what appeared to be the fastest stop of the bunch. Dixon also protect, protects what is effectively third position with a bunch of cars still to pit. As you see the gap between first and second after the stops there, Newgarden to Erickson. So six seconds exactly at the time of Newgarden stopping. Yep, so it's about four seconds right now on the timing and scoring that I see. And with Erickson, with more push to pass available, he might have a chance to close it down. Traffic will factor into it as Pato Award comes to pit lane for his final stop. Primary Firestones for Alex Pillow running in the top five. This is the championship leader. The young Spaniard has already won twice this year and has been so impressive. He's away a little further back, Pato Award. He's the only one in the top 10 that has the sticker, Faster Reds. They were debating what to go to, decided on the Reds. Here's the blend out. Looking at the blend with Scott Dixon, Rossi, and Ray Hall firing through turn one. Further up ahead, there's Alex Pillow out of the pits. He'll be on cold tires, but I think he's got enough of a gap to probably hang on. But Dixon will be pushing real hard here. He knows this is the best chance to get his teammate. This is huge for Alex Pillow in his championship fight with Pato Award. As they stand right now, Pillow would have added another eight points to his advantage over the Arrow McLaren SP driver. But we've still got 25 laps to race here at Mid-Ohio on 4th of July afternoon. Beautiful weather in Ohio. The NASCAR Cup Series coming up next from Road America. What a day to spend America's birthday. You're watching NBC's coverage of IndyCar brought to you by Shield Cleansers, a full line of powerful disinfectants and cleansers, proud partner of Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing. Liberty Mutual Insurance, only pay for what you need. Carvana, driven to make winners out of our customers. And by Honda, an official vehicle of the NTT IndyCar Series. 22 to go here at Mid-Ohio, and we need to give you an update on the Gainbridge Honda of Colton Herder, and it's not a good story if you're a Colton Herder fan. The view from the Geico chopper high above, and unfortunately, 
It's another negative for the young American. Two stop race, two drama pit stops for Colton Herta. Everything's great, tires on, fuel plugged and flowing down and a uh, no, stalls it. Starter has to go back in. Gonna lose another six or seven seconds here. Herta was in a mad dash trying to do the overcut, battling with Dixon, Rossi, Rahal, Award, and Grosjean, and unfortunately, all of those guys would blow by. You see there, Colton Herta now four seconds back of the 51 of Roman Grosjean. Meanwhile, Joseph Newgard, pretty happy with that six and a half second gap. That seems to be where he's managing it over Marcus Erickson. Good day for Chip Ganassi Racing. Uh, as far as consistency, with three cars in the top four positions. Marcus Ericsson, Alex Pillow, and Scott Dixon. Kevin, let's talk more about the 10, the NTT Data Honda. And think about the teammates this young man has in his second season. He's got the six-time champ, Scott Dixon. He's got the Formula One veteran in Marcus Ericsson. And then he's also got guys like Tony Kanaan and, and Jimmy Johnson as well. And I think that's one of the things that helped Pillow step up his game in his first year with this team. He gives a lot of credit of just watching Scott Dixon. He says, I admittedly annoy them a lot because I ask a lot of questions. Dixon is good with it because they're good questions. But what he's taken from those guys and what he's also taken from Jimmy Johnson is the work ethic. Yes, we know Jimmy is learning this, but he knows how to win. He knows how to be a champion and it all applies. And Alex has said, hey, if I see Scott Dixon and Jimmy Johnson reviewing video, getting in early, especially Dixon, I got to do it too. It's forced me to step up my game. Well, just mentioning Jimmy Johnson there. Good time to do the Carvana drive the vote. Yeah, Carvana. Three paint schemes to choose from there. You got a favorite, Div? Yep. I like the one. Uh, I'd vote for the one on the far right. Carvana's giving you, the fans, the chance to vote on your favorite design for Jimmy Johnson's livery for the next race, which is on August 8th on the streets of Nashville, Tennessee, the Music City Grand Prix. Simply visit carvana.com slash vote to drive the boat, which was yours. I like the middle, I like the blue wheel detail. He's rocking that today, I think that's pretty distinctive. Here we go, here's a Honda versus Chevrolet battle. Rahal Letterman Lanigan's Graham Rahal and Pato Award, the arrow on board. Let's go for a ride. Well, it has had 34 seconds, 34 seconds of overtake for Rahal. Rossi ahead of him, go the delicate dance from Pato Award listening to that throttle modulation just how you have to be smooth and get around this undulating track with about five blind corners totally blind and show that commitment show that balance show your rhythm try and be smooth but fast at the same time conserve but attack all of the above in his race right now to try and get by Graham Rahal for sixth position Terrific to see a full lap there from the helicopter. Aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. Thanks for that. Love seeing these guys ribbing their way around uh, this really iconic track, one of the best in North America. I love all the undulations, the cambers, the varied surfaces, the curbing. A lot of character around here. And right now for Pato Award, he's trying to show his character on the softer Firestone red tires. Only one in the top group right now that'll try to finish on the soft compound. And he knows, still with 17 laps to go, this is a really good chance to try to make a run at Graham Rahal. 
But question is where? When do you pounce? It's going to have to be a bold move, Lee. I don't think it's going to come easy. And try and menace Ray Hall here. You say this Ohio circuit is iconic. You know, active IndyCar tracks, it has hosted the second most races behind the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Today is race number 38. Yes, a few double headers over the years have helped rank, uh, rack that number up. But pretty cool, the history here. Going all the way back to Johnny Rutherford's victory in 1980. I will never forget my first laps at Mid-Ohio in an IndyCar. Came on a Monday, I won the Indy Lights race on a Sunday. And boy, I thought I was on top of the cloud until I climbed in behind 900 horsepower, in front of 900 horsepower, high downforce, tons of grip. And boy, it was, uh, talk about getting your attention as a young man. These things are beasts around here. If Joseph Newgarden can be victorious today in 17 laps time, for him to go home to Nashville, Tennessee, as the star of that race and the most recent race winner, it would be incredible. Remember we told you about those almost, those near misses, those near victories. That's what tells the story of the last two races. Could he fill in where those question marks are? It certainly looks at it by the domination. 57 laps led today by Joseph Newgarden. And you know, sometimes, Lee, we will talk to the strategist with, and there's Tim Sindrick, the president of Team Penske, about the situation. There's nothing to ask Tim Sindrick at this point. There's no drama. There's no concerns other than just things holding up. And I almost don't want to jinx him by asking him, hey, how you feeling right now? We know how they're feeling. They want to see the car take the checkered flag because they could have, should have done it about a half a dozen times so far this season. And with that, Joseph told me, I think I'm probably handling it better now than I would have earlier in my career. I was over it as soon as I could be on Sunday night after Road America when the gearbox failed, eight miles from the finish in two laps. Nothing I can do about it. Nothing the team can do about it. We have been performing well. Now we just got to finish one off. By the way, we spoke to Roger Penske himself and some team members about that mechanical issue with Newgarden. The team had never seen it before. It was such an anomaly. Crazy what happened to Joseph two weeks ago at Road America. It could be all going his way here today, though. He's just 15 laps from home and seeing that checkered flag first. So much history in this four-mile road course in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin. It's Road America. And it's been 65 years since the Cup Series has raced. Can young drivers like Mark Trex Jr., Joey Logano, maybe even Ryan Blaney or William Byron, can they be the next winner? It was Tim Flock who won 65 years ago. Coming up next, it's William Byron starting on the pole. Good stuff, Rick. Thanks for that. Yes, it continues our huge block of racing here on NBC on Independence Day. Hope you're having a terrific day wherever you are, hopefully with friends and family and enjoying the day to the full extent. You know who's enjoying himself on his return to IndyCar for Ray Hall, Letterman, Lanigan Racing in the high V Honda is Santino Ferrucci. Qualifying did not work out. He said, I couldn't get the car to work. We were scratching our heads. Well, they sure have in the race. He's made up 12 positions and Ferrucci's in the top 10. He's done a terrific job. Just five seconds now back of his teammate, Graham Rahal, and he's looking to just try to catch on to the tail end of that pack with Colton Herta, Grosjean Award just ahead. So 12 laps to go. A lot of action still to play for, Kelly, but for Ferrucci on a part-time schedule, this guy has shown real well for Rahal Letterman. And other than Pato Award, the biggest mover of the race, now of 12 positions, and like Pato Award on those red alternate tires, and he's putting them to work here. In the closing laps of this race, he used to be a full-time IndyCar driver, Indy 500 Rookie of the Year a couple of years ago, and now he's been splitting his time between the NASCAR Xfinity Series and back here in the IndyCar paddock. And just to give you an idea of how different those two race cars are, when he raced in an Xfinity Series car at Pocono last week, he told me the lap times were 20 seconds slower a lap in an Xfinity Series car versus the Indy car. His goal this weekend, he said two. One, he wanted to keep the car moving at all times. He's wrecked two race cars 
uh, already this season, and he's pretty disappointed with himself. The second goal was to qualify in the Firestone Fast Sticks, and as Lee said, that certainly did not work out for him, but they are turning lemons into lemonade. He could come away with a top 10 finish here. And that's a key point, Kelly, because if you're going to get someone to come in just for limited races, so the Indy 500, he's never finished worse than, what, sixth, I think, at the Indianapolis 500, sixth or seventh. Uh, he was Rookie of the Year uh, three years ago. But he comes into Ray Hall Letterman landing in this high V Honda as a super sub. Well, at the Indy 500, he finished sixth. At Detroit 1, he finished sixth. Detroit 2, he finishes 10th. And here, he comes from 22nd to 10th. So if you're going to come in as a super sub and you can guarantee top 10 results for your team, that's not a bad effort. Not at all. And for Ray Hall Letterman, they are building their team and their program to contend with the biggest and best of them all. New facility coming together, over 100,000 square feet. They're not interested in drivers that just protect equipment. Ferrucci's banged up some cars, but that's been in the practice sessions. The guy is racing like a race winner, like somebody that can knock out top fives week in and week out. And I think he's shown the team, hey, I am a strong consideration. I should be a strong consideration for a full-time ride, whether it's here or back with another IndyCar team. I know he's having fun in the Xfinity series, but I really see him up in the seat and having a blast charging towards the front. He's having a great day. And in about two or three laps, I know there's only 10 to go, in about two or three laps, at the rate that he's going faster than Grosjean, he's going to catch Grosjean on board with Colton Herta. Speaking of Grosjean, turn two. I'd say the inside line is the way to go down there in the keyhole. That rim shot on the high side doesn't seem to be much grip out there late in the race, and Grosjean figuring that out the hard way. Meanwhile, Colton Herta, look at this aerial view. He is absolutely on the charge. That was Scott Dixon in fourth just out of the frame. So Colton Herta, nine laps to go. How much push to pass does he have left? I'm seeing 42 seconds. Yep. Here it is, left-hand side of the screen on telemetry. But in front of him, Award has 23, Ray Hall 20, Rossi 40 seconds. So Colton Hurt has got a really good shot down the stretch to get himself back up where, frankly, he belongs after those two really rough pit stops. Guess who else is doing some catching? The Husky Chocolate Honda driver, Marcus Erickson, has brought it from in excess of six seconds down to 3.3 to the race leader. There is Joseph Newgarden out in front. And wait for it. Look to the top of your screen. There's Marcus Erickson. That's what 3.3 seconds looks like. And you see what was in front of Joseph Newgarden? Traffic. Traffic for Newgarden. Nine laps to go. It's going to be fun when we come back. Newgarden has plenty of push to pass. He might need to use it because here comes the speedy Swede. So... We are enjoying ourselves here on the 4th, and we're already looking forward to the Music City Grand Prix in Nashville. There's the Preds and the Titans represented here in Mid-Ohio, the Music City Grand Prix. There's a lot of excitement in Nashville. Music City, man. Nashville is electric. Full party city. There's good food, good people, good music. Fun, exciting. Race. I never thought I would become an IndyCar driver one day, let alone have an opportunity to drive IndyCars in the streets of my home city. The track layout just looks awesome. I'm excited about driving over the bridge. It looks uh, quite crazy. Who doesn't like just cars screaming or just flying over the bridge? It's cool. August 8th is that next race. There's a much-earned summer break coming up at the conclusion of this race in five laps time. Now, while you see this spirited battle further back in the field between the likes of Ray Hall, Ward and Herter up front, it's just 2.6 seconds between Joseph Newgarden and Marcus Erickson. Chevrolet versus Honda. Team Penske versus Ganassi. And Newgarden has been using a lot of push to pass in these recent laps. He knows that this is a legit challenge from Ericsson. Let's take a look. Push to pass remaining now. Newgarden 78 seconds. Ericsson 42. How about Dixon? Just six seconds left with Rossi and Ray Hall in award. All on Dixon's tail. Dixon There's trying to clear Dalton Kellett here of AJ Foyt Racing, and he does. Dalton Kellett's a lap down there. 
Now the rest have to do the same. Here's Pato Award and Romain Grosjean. This is for eighth place. Crowd on the hill being treated to fantastic racing late in this 80 lap. Honda Indy 200 here at Mid-Ohio. Kevin. Gr and Kevin Grosjean has really struggled on these blacks. He said the car is undrivable just a moment ago. And he had told me before the race, I really like the car in the reds. I do not like it on the primary Firestones. Well, then that's showing as Pato Award there in the orange and black aero car on the softer red compound. He's the first car in the running order that'll finish on reds. And let's just ride for a couple corners and just see what it's like to hang on to this machine through turn one. Big sideways at the apex. And Santino Ferrucci in that bright red high V Honda. He's lined up for a shot as well. He's made up 12 positions. He'd like to make it 13 with a move on O'Ward. That's going to hurt O'Ward's championship fight with Alex Pelot, who has got one foot on the podium in third. Four laps to go at Road America. It was a yellow and a restart with two laps to go with Newgarden with an issue at the worst possible time with all these guys queuing up here in the battle for that final spot in uh, just outside the podium. There's a chance for contact, Kelly. And meanwhile, Marcus Erickson turning the fastest laps on track, and he's been doing it in large part without the use of push to pass, and that gap between Newgarden's push to pass remaining in Erickson continues to shrink, and that split now just more than two seconds uh, is Marcus Erickson behind the leader. At one point in time, it was more than eight seconds. For the longest period of time, it was in the six-second range. But look at the work that Erickson's been doing, and now Newgarden's coming up on traffic. Traffic ahead big time for the race leader. Bunch of cars are starting to queue up behind Jimmy Johnson up ahead. Remember, Jimmy Johnson is the teammate on Chip Ganassi Racing with Marcus Erickson. There you see Newgarden from the helicopter. That's Hunter Ray. And then further up the road, there's four cars there queued up behind Jimmy Johnson. So that is the trouble. That is the drama that Newgarden's looking at right now. And now the gap's down to a second and a half with two laps to go. 1.5 seconds. Newgarden has more push to pass than this man here, Marcus Erickson, but this thing is not over. Oh boy, if you're Joseph Newgarden with all of the bad luck, you look down these straightaways at Mid-Ohio and you're thinking to yourself, are you kidding me? Come on, why can't I just cruise to a win? There is Tim Sindrick, he's watching on, he's gotta be concerned. The president of Team Penske has seen his driver in this position the last two races, only to see the win stripped away from them. It surely can't happen a third time in a row. The Cinderella story is meant to be a Penske wins on the Penske 50th anniversary of the team's first win in IndyCar. And, and sure, Newgarden's got 50 seconds of push to pass, but does he want to accelerate into those lap cars or does he want to try to play with managing the gap and clean air in front? We've seen that technique used to great effect it's by Scott Dixon on the ovals. 1.1 seconds. Newgarden was slow through turn nine. That cost him big time, and Ericsson's now within one second with one lap to go. Is it possible for the Swedish driver to catch the American star? Ericsson has to hustle right here. He's got the long straightaway out of the keyhole. That's his best shot to make a move. You're Meanwhile, struggling here. Everything you got, buddy. just doesn't want to lose the back end. You cannot overtake. afford a big slide here. Steady on the throttle. Roll it on as Newgarden does. Ericsson is on the attack. 31 seconds versus 22 seconds of push to pass. Ericsson is on the attack. It is essentially all corners from here. It would take a big mistake from Newgarden, a big slide, a big moment to allow Ericsson to get close. I don't know that it matters. Ericsson is flying. That gap is now down to about half a second. The corner where Newgarden has not been good the last couple of laps is coming up. It's right here. Turn nine into Thunder Valley. Does he drift out again? What's Ericsson got? Ericsson lights it up. On the final lap, the run to home. U.S. versus Sweden. Penske versus Ganassi. Two corners to go. It's Roger Penske's only American driver in this team. And he is going to win on Independence Day on Penske's 50th anniversary. Yeah, we got one. Newgarden finally right. does it. That's what's going on.
and it's Penske's yeah. first win of 2021. Uh, great job, boys. Very nice work. Happy 4th of July, the captain. Oh, that was a little too close for comfort 10 laps ago. That was, that was pretty tough at the end there. <laughs> you bet it was. Well done, Joseph. Yes, it's pretty smooth in the first half of the sim, but that second was brutal. Second half was brutal. Yes, it was. And you had to sustain immense pressure. Alex below the championship lead against third. Scott Dixon, Alexander Rossi, Graham Rahal, then Roman Grosjean. Pato Award was able to sustain the pressure from Santino Ferrucci. But what a thriller here at Mid-Ohio. Those two gentlemen right there put on quite the show on the final lap. Well done. So on the most appropriate time on the 4th of July, Joseph Newgarden steers a Team Penske IndyCar home on the 50th anniversary of Roger's first IndyCar win. And the crowd know it's special too. And just based on Newgarden's voice on the radio there after the checkered flag, you have to wonder, two or three more laps, you've got three Ganassi, all three Chip Ganassi cars finishing second, third, and fourth. I would have thought they would have had a chance, but this is 80 laps and 80 laps only. IndyCar is international, but American wins on 4th of July. Time for the Children's Miracle Network moment of the race. It's more like a passage of the weekend. Joseph Newgarden got his third consecutive pole position, and he led 73 of the 80 laps. Some more comfortable than others. It was tense at the end, but that was the Children's Miracle Network moments of the race, and it's time for the two-time champ, who's now a two-time winner at Mid-Ohio, to celebrate on Independence Day. And Joseph Newgarden is also now the winningest active American driver in IndyCar, number 19. One more than Ryan Hunter Ray. Roger Penske said he's been tired of hearing about Team Penske not winning so far this season. Well, now that's done, and Joseph can eventually move on to the championship. But first things first, what do you think in those final few laps as that gap shrinks considering what's happened in other occasions this year? You know, I'd start each stint and feel like I had everything under control you get to the back end of it, and I thought I was starting to fall apart. Um, so it was really hard to hang on, but you know, I had, uh, I had my wingman, Tim, coaching me all the way, uh, just making sure I knew what was up, up to date. Um, but I don't know what to say other than they've been, you know, this team's been doing the job. You know, everyone's been giving me a hard time asking uh, what's up with us not winning a race, but you know, I don't think these, uh, these people at Team Penske could have done anything different. We've, uh, you know, we've been in the game uh, almost every race, had, had great performance, and obviously uh, great support from our partner in Team Chevy. So it's, it's great to see all a win here finally on the year. We're, we're going to need probably three or four more of these if we want to win this championship, but uh, this team is capable of it. So I'm just excited to be back. You know, two weeks off was uh, was enough, and to come back and, you know, finally get a win, I'm just I'm happy for our whole crew. How about a win going into your hometown race on August 8th in Nashville? Yeah, it's it's great, right? It's good, uh, good motivation. Um, Tim said we needed to be the first pit box out in, in Nashville, so we got that done yesterday. We got some confidence with this win, so, I, you know, I feel like we can – we can make it all happen. I always believe that. I've, I've told these guys, I believe we can any, win any race we go into. Nashville would be a dream to, to have a good result for. Um, but just, you know, so proud. Great to have Expel in the car. I think it's the first win we got for Expel. So uh, super pumped for that partnership. And, you know, let's keep it up. We got, we got what, six races to go? Um, we can make it happen, believe me. They're coming. Joseph Newgarden in front of a packed crowd today at Mid-Ohio. The American wins on the 4th of July. Kelly. Well, Team Penske gets the win, but Chip Ganassi Racing finishes second, third, and fourth, led by Marcus Erickson. And what a performance there in the closing laps. What, Marcus, if anything more, could you have done? I don't know. We, we had a great day. I think, like I said, the, the whole team to get the two, three, four there was a great result. So, you know, really, really proud of the whole, the whole team. You know, everyone has done a great job, and it was a true team effort. Uh, the number eight Husky Chocolate Honda was, was feeling great out there and we were pushing re very, very hard there in the end to catch Joseph and a couple more laps we could have challenged for it. But uh, overall, you know, P2 was a very good result today. And a good points day. You move up to fifth in the championship standings. How big to have this result just before we head into the summer break? It couldn't be better, you know, like I said, jumping up to P5 in the championship. Uh, not too far from the guys ahead and uh, very positive momentum, you know, since my win in Detroit. I've had some really good weekends and starting to show what I can do. So really, really happy. It feels good to go on the summer break now and then 
great charts for the for the last part of the season. Congratulations on a great result. Thank you so much. That was awesome. Congratulations to Marcus. Really nice job. And three of the top five cars in the championship belong to Chip Ganassi. That's strong. Well, sold as NASCAR team, so piling some of those resources maybe to the IndyCar program down the stretch. Got a couple of Penske cars up there as Pato Award stays in second. 39 points back from Alex Pillow. But Marcus Erickson, he mentioned it, top five in the points. He goes up three positions on the back of that second place finish. Let's head back down to Kevin Lee. I've got a couple of Ganassi drivers here. We'll start with the championship leader. Well, you were uh, quite content uh, with seventh qualifying, and you made up some spots, finishing third, and gained some in the championship. Yeah, it was a good day for the number 10 NTT Data Honda car. Um, it, we were really fast, and that's why I was super happy yesterday. I missed a bit on qualifying to get to the fast six, but uh, yeah, it was a good position to start. We did a good strategy. Um, the guys on the pits were amazing. I think we got the fastest pit stops, and that's what gave us uh, the podium today. So super happy, super proud uh, to Chip Ganassi Racing cars in the podium, and yeah, it was a good day. Let's bring in Scott Dixon here. He knows something about championships. Six of them, you come in uh, fourth in this race, but let's go back to the contact that you had with Will Power there going through the 4-5 section. We've talked to Will about it. He wasn't really pointing any fingers. He just said, yeah, one thing was that he was on reds and I was on blacks and I should have known he was being aggressive. How did you see it? Yeah, we just had to, we had to get past Will. You know, obviously at no point do I want to, you know, take anybody else. And I think it was just a racing incident. You know, we were pushing hard. You know, if you give too much room on the outside, last year I gave Will a bunch of room on the outside and he kind of ran me off the track there. So it's, um, you know, I didn't do anything on purpose and, and uh, sorry for, you know, his day uh, not turning out, but uh, definitely a, a tough race for us. Um, you know, just the rear of the car we couldn't hold on to, you know, throughout the race. So it was definitely very frustrating. We couldn't push it any time. We tried to adjust during the race, but uh, good job by all the Ganassi crew. You know, congrats to, to Marcus and, and obviously Alex uh, and uh, to, to um, you know, Joseph for the win there. But uh, we, we need some work. We've got to do some work. Yeah, you have come back before to win championships. I would say about half of your six championships. Are you still, you feel comfortable where you're at with six to go? Yeah, what are we, 56 points back there or something. So, you know, it's still, I had a 130-point lead, I think, at some point last year, and it went down to 17, so, or 15 or something. So, like, it's, uh, it's going to be tight. I know Joseph's going to be strong. I know Alex is going to be strong. You know, it's going to be a lot of strong cars. So keep our head down. We're going to keep working hard. We've got some interesting tracks coming up towards the end of the season. Bit of a four-week break here, which is going to be interesting for a lot of us, too. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But, uh, you know, it's always fun to be driving the PNC Bank car number nine, and you know, great job by Honda today. Thanks, Scott. Thanks. Scott Dixon reminding us all that it is far from over. As we show you the results, here's an important thing to remember. For the last six races in a row prior to today, the driver who led the most laps did not win. That trend was broken emphatically here today. A 4th of July American driver on pole. He was not going to be denied. Got close in the end, but he pulled it off for the Stars and Stripes as we see the results further down the order here at Mid-Ohio. Simon Pagano, a quiet day, but he stays sixth in the championship. And a couple of those drivers that had contact early on, like Hunter Ray, Ed Jones, and Will Power, left to lick their wounds for four weeks until we come back for the Music City. Just think about this, what this means on 4th of July for Joseph, Joseph Newgarden and heading to his home race in Nashville, Tennessee for the first time on the streets in the Music City Grand Prix. Finally, finally, Team Penske doesn't have to answer that question anymore of when are you gonna win in 2021? And this is what the remainder of the 21 calendar looks like for the NTT IndyCar Series. After Nashville, we head back to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway on the road course. And then the final oval of the year at Worldwide Technology Raceway in St. Louis. And then it's a triple treat on the West Coast, Portland, followed by the next week at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. And then the famed Long Beach Grand Prix to say farewell to 2021. Who will be the champ? It is still wide open. Well, what a day on reflection, but this is just the opening part of our motorsport afternoon on Independence Day. Thanks so much for watching the NTT IndyCar Series, the Honda Indy 200 here at Mid-Ohio. It was a hard-fought race. Joseph Newgarden led 73 of the 80 laps to get the victory. Coming up next here on NBC, our racing continues with the NASCAR Cup Series from Road America. Happy 4th, everyone. Enjoy.